ಕರುಣಾರ್ಣವಮಾಯ್ ಕರುದಗ್ಗತಿ ನಲ್ಗು ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ವಾಯ್ ಡು ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಅ ಗುರು ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಮೀ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೀಡ್ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ವಾಚ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟರ್ನೆಟ್ I can sit and meditate or do other spiritual practices myself. Why do I need a guru? Well, the answer is very simple. Because you need discipline. And the specific kind of discipline that you need is to be in a space with a realized being. You see, We're not talking about intellectual knowledge here. Although we use words and intellectual structures of ideas, ontologies and so on like this, to communicate certain truths. But these are not the object of what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is to change consciousness. And specifically, to change consciousness to a type of consciousness called self-realization. And this is, from the very beginning, inexplicable. Ineffable. Ineffable means it can't be described in words. So if it can't be described in words, there's no way that you can completely understand self-realization just by hearing words. I'm sorry, it just isn't that way. So you need someone who is already in that state. I gave a good example a couple of weeks back when I talked about the class that we just had, the online class. And the online class, the specific goal of this class from the very beginning was to change the being of students with respect to the definitions of terms. And I gave a specific exercise which involved looking up the definitions of the ordinary words in the language, like is, and, that, a, <laughs> such, which, up, and etc. These small words that define relationships between other things. And they didn't do it. And the reason I know they didn't do it is because later on when we got to the section of on ontology, everybody hit the wall. Splat! <laughs> and they started manifesting all the symptoms of misunderstood terms. It was classic. It was perfect. I mean, it was really amazing how all the things that we had talked about in the earlier section of the course started to happen, but they couldn't see it. And the reason they couldn't see it is that they were far away and we were communicating over a low bandwidth connection, even though we had video conferencing and messaging and all of that, it's still not enough. You have to come within the energy field of a realized being, and then you can taste their being if you're open to it, if you're sensitive enough. You can taste that state of being and realize that, oh, I'm not in that consciousness, so I have to transform myself. And this can lead to doing the inner work that actually creates the transformation. But going over the internet, it's not going to happen. You see, this is the meaning of Upanishad. Upa means close. Huh? Anish means stay and ashat means sit down 
So come close and stay and sit down and listen. Listen not only to the words, but to the being of the guru. Now, how do we know who is guru? Well, for those who are aware, <clears throat> it's very simple. A guru is someone who is self-realized. <laughs> well, how do you know they're self-realized? If you're not, how can you tell? Well, there's one very reliable method, and that is Vedic astrology. If you look at someone's Vedic astrology chart, if they have certain configurations of planets in their chart, it means they have what's called Chaita Guru. Chaita Guru means in the heart. They have the universal Guru speaking to them from within the heart. And so there's no way this person can be deviated from the truth. Others who may not have this can have some knowledge about self-realization, but knowledge about is not the same thing as being self-realized. See, this is the whole problem in Western culture. In Western culture, people assume incorrectly that just by knowing about something, it's the same as understanding it. But it's not. There's another level of higher understanding, which is being. And we cover this in all of our introductory series. Of course, people don't watch it because they're not disciplined. <laughs> but being is senior to knowledge. For example, you want to become a musician. Is it enough to simply read books about music and maybe listen to some music and maybe, you know, look at an instrument? <laughs> no. Even practicing the instrument without proper guidance doesn't really lead anywhere. But if you get in association with professionals who have a high degree of, of musical expertise, they can guide you. And by hanging out with them, by association, you can pick up the being of a musician. You see, and this is something on a much higher level than knowledge about music. You know, there's performers, artists, and then there's critics. The critics think they know something about music, but they don't know anything. And the reason they don't know anything is that they're not musicians. Or if they are, they're on an amateur level, they're not on a very high level. So if one can do, one becomes an artist. If one cannot do, one becomes a critic or a scholar and analyzes things with words. So there is a place for knowledge on the spiritual path. I'm not going to deny it. I'm not going to say knowledge is useless. A certain amount of knowledge is good. And especially if it's the, the quality of knowledge that leads one to actually take discipline from a guru. You see, because this is the problem. I have quite a few unfinished series on this channel. Vedanta Sutra, uh, Lalita Sahasranamam, uh, and recently the uh, Mahishasura Mardini Stotram. And why are they unfinished? Well, because the first few episodes, the first two or three episodes get, you know, a good number of views. And then it starts to drop off until I'm getting like 20 views. You know, look, just because you watched the first couple of episodes doesn't mean that you can't benefit from the later episodes. Duh. But because people have no discipline, they don't want to sit through the whole series. So the interest goes down. Huh? And at some point I lose interest because <laughs> I've already read the whole thing. And not only that, realized it. Or I wouldn't present it here. You have to go way back to the beginning 
and watch my series on integrity, being integrity, that I took a vow, I made a point, took a principle very early in this channel history that I would not talk about anything that I don't personally know firsthand. I'm not just going to talk about words. I'm not going to like read one page ahead in the book, you know? But this is everything I talk about is something that I've actually practiced and realized. So this is also another distinction between a, a real guru and somebody who's just saying the words. But you see, you can't know any of this unless you're in the personal presence. If you're in the personal presence of someone who's realized, you can feel it unless they're hiding, <laughs> which is another thing. Sometimes it's more convenient to just act like an ordinary person. But if someone is a student, if, especially if someone is a disciple, then a guru will manifest his full powers and it will be very apparent. You can feel it. I can feel the presence of Ramana Maharshi here in Tiruvannamalai even though physically he has not been present for a long time, over 50 years. Spiritually, he's still very much aware and alive and present in the form of Arunachala. So this is a connection with a realized soul. You can have a connection with a realized soul over a distance, but to make that connection, you have to be in the presence. This is my experience. Now, I'm not going to talk much about the specific astrological features of someone who's actually realized. And the reason I'm not going to talk about it and give details is because then somebody will try to imitate. Huh? They'll come up with a phony chart and say, look, I have all of these things, right? These signs in the chart. No, this is for expert astrologers to know. It's not public knowledge because of people's character and the, the fact that they will cheat. So it's very easy to know if someone is a, a realized person, if someone is a qualified guru by looking at the chart. I started to explore this subject in a previous series but then again, I dropped it because there was no interest. <laughs> so without this knowledge, you can't know who's for real and who's a phony. But if there's no interest in that knowledge, then why should I share it? So I don't know, there might be one or two people who actually watched all the episodes of any given series but I can't tell who they are. You know, the only way I could tell is if they manifest the understanding. And so far, I haven't seen anybody manifest the understanding of any of these series, which is why I say again and again that I'm not a guru, and specifically, I'm not your guru. And the reason I'm not your guru is because you haven't come here and qualified as a disciple. See? This is the knowledge that's given in the ancient scriptures. It's good for all time. It can't be changed. Just because now there's an internet doesn't really change anything. You know, it, the internet is just basically a glorified postal system. Now we can send videos and books and everything, you know, over the internet. Whereas in the old days, they had to be sent, carried by hand, even copied by hand. But I don't know, maybe that was good because it kept advanced knowledge out of the hands of people who would misuse it or misunderstand it. And it really made it necessary to go to a guru and submit to the discipline of the guru to gain that knowledge. Because then what you gain is not simply the words, but it's the discipline that leads to the higher state. 
So if someone has this Chaitya Guru, the Guru in the heart, the voice of the Absolute that speaks through them, then they are qualified to be Guru because they can guide you to the highest realizations. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.